but we're constantly curating and killing things and turning them off and saying, oh, well, I wish that had worked. Well, you know, and also I think if you look at sort of the digital space, it's a lot easier and cheaper to tell lots of different type of stories than it is in print, than mm -hmm. it is in television, than it is in film. Um, and, you know, if you look at sort of blockbuster films, there's only three types of films that are being made. The shoot 'em up, kill 'em, you know, franchise, blockbuster, summer fair, romantic comedies, and then the, the you know, the, the push of indie Oscar worthy performances at the end of the year. You know, so if you think, if you compare that with the diversity of voices that the internet has allowed you to see and hear and experience, it's not so difficult, or it's not as difficult to sort of fly the non-traditional stories under the radar. Mm -hmm. Because even if they can't, I can't monetize them on their own, I'm still getting run of site business, right. I'm still talking to an audience that feels that they're being served, that they have something. And you know, if we do a story about um, how young black girls that are abducted don't get the same coverage as young white girls that get abducted, you know, they may say, <laughs> <laughs> are one of the most popular parts of the site. I'd say the top three. Now the difference is that our blogs tend to be extremely, and they're individual voices, but they're tied to the show. Mm -hmm. Our brand are the shows. We're not a vertical like, you know, I village, you know, women or health or thinking you know, more about the shows. So um, those blogs are unbelievably popular and they're completely monetized. Now, the way ours have been monetized is we have the advantage of being on ourselves, so everything at Bravo sold is 360 sale. So we sell the on air, the you know online, and the wireless hold is one block. So we have a certain advantage. That, you know, mm -hmm. you want you want top chef, you gotta buy the block. Mm -hmm. That's 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 not cool. All right, I know we have questions. I'm getting a wave. Please. Um, so I think the fact that 36 million women a week are in the women's blogosphere is a testament to how women bloggers are serving other women bloggers with rich content and other things in a way traditional media has not. But ladies, is traditional media waking up to the fact that these are the future content provider? And if so, what do you think the big companies can do to take advantage of that? I'm just going to step on that first because I think that being a magazine, we are so much already in that idea and knowledge because you know, magazines have been trying to peel back their doors and be in kind of a circular conversation. So for me, that's like the big fat duh. Um, the thing that I'm constantly trying to work on is what I say to my team is, as we build the magazine, the conversations we have are much more interesting than the actual end magazine is itself. Despite everything I have done to make sure it both lateral and casual and informal and have tons and tons of voices in it, you know, that continues to be a process for me. I'll be introducing in 2009 whole new story formats and things to try to capture the sense of what does it feel like to be in a room and how do you print that on a piece of paper and not lose that kind of warmth. Um, but I would say very much my company is all about what this kind of room looks like. The thing that media companies care about most is engagement and they're just now starting to learn that engagement is something that is represented in millions of little tiny dots instead of big voting blocks, you know? It's like, I think that the way that corporations, there's much more awareness that it's big moving oceans of customers instead of the idea that a customer gets expressed as being one particular kind of person. I always, people say, who's the Red Book Reader? I'm like, well, I have five types. And then I'm, I'm like, there are actually 10 million of them. And they're all pretty different. But I can get it into five buckets. But even that, I think, is something that I hear and come across more now that there's not a sense that it's this big monolithic thing that's the desire. And I also think that um, if you look at where the big media companies are spending, all of them have women's editions. Um, Warner Brothers launched on Lodge in December, um, which is a site that goes sort of promoted through Ellen and Tyra about moms. Um, and they have a network, so I know they're reaching out to bloggers. I can also take cards for that area as well. I work with those guys. Um, and, you know, I think what NBC has done with my village, I mean, you're seeing sort of a, uh, a, a recognition that women are really trying to space as they feel need. You know, there are four networks for women. Um, there are hundreds of magazines for women. So I think, you know, really harnessing uh, the 
the longest beard. And I'm surprised that there aren't more magazine editors here doing recruiting. I'm surprised that there aren't more companies here doing recruiting. And rest assured, I'm not going to have to find more. Yeah. But I think it's definitely next to every time we're talking about it. So I think that, you know, as we're being so you move a little slow sometimes, but I think, you know, in the next couple of years, you will be sort of indicated and then I'm sure there will be conversations much in corporate, you know, so, um, you know, but I do believe that the time is coming and it will be here in support of the full force between readers on different technologies. I'm really, really curious. Um, I have a friend who produces a TV show in the Time Warner arsenal. And when she brought this stuff up, they're like, yeah, you can blog, but you cannot Twitter. You cannot use something called tw quick, which is live video from the phone to shoot behind the scenes. Do you think the loosening up of that control is going to come, or do you think that's going to continue to be a challenge going forward? So just the adoption of newer stuff. Thanks. Um, you know, it's, just one second. Can everyone? Can you guys hear me? Okay. Okay. Good. Um, you know, at a company like Time Warner, there's layers upon layers of just pure technical, pardon my French, bullshit that you have to go through to get technologies approved. You know, it, it's, it is literally mind-numbing. The fact that, you know, we, we are still rolling out applications in Java when everybody else in the world is on PHP. It, you know, that part of it is hard, and that's the biggest challenge, um, I think, for large companies is because the economies of scale when you're looking at wide enterprise on the technology front, it's really hard to have, you know, a hundred different media companies all doing different platforms just from a management of the technology. That's fascinating. And what was with the, I'll tell one funny story is the, 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 the advertisement, it, it, the, the, you know, we, you know, we have to have long debates because it's new. So the advertisers don't know what it is. So we, they, we got together and we decided that the offer should be that you can go to the sheer genius finale party, which Nexus sponsors. It got more responses than the content itself. <laughs> wow. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, obviously the, the learning there is you've got to make sure your content is pretty darn good or the, you know, that there's something super appealing, just like right. how the get free giveaways is the it's most popular place. One. Right. <laughs> Contextual reach yeah. and scale. Thank Thank you, that's a great anecdote. Other questions? Yes, my name is Nicole Simon and I'm Geo Challenge. I would love to watch Geo Genius or Top Chef or Project One Way. I'm from Germany, by the way. And I read all these blogs and I read the recaps and it's fine because it's the only way I can keep up with ever what is happening because you're never going to sell these shows in its original form uh, to the different countries like, for example, Germany. And no, I don't want to see the German version of all of that. I just want to see the original. <laughs> you display on the website, I can see the advertising. And I can see the blog, like for example the Tim Gunn blog and everything around it. But as I usually say, please monetize on my on me as well. There, are, yeah. at least in Europe, there are over 300 million people able to read and write English, so they could enjoy television, they could enjoy all of those networks. But what are your efforts actually into moving to a more international space? Because we have money, we have euro, and we don't <laughs> have a recession. And usually, in the blogosphere, when we have a conversation about the globalization of media, it's less complimentary. So, <laughs> so I, first of all, thank you. I mean, we would love to be where you are. Um, internationally, the business is such that the people who make the programs, let's say in Germany, they don't want to buy Sheer Genius, the American version. So that's an international problem. They just they want to buy the rights to make their own version because they think it will sell more. So there's that issue. As far as Streamy is concerned, the, one of the biggest issues Bravo faces is that we have a limitation on our streaming because of relationships with the operators. Because the operators also want a piece of the action. So we are prevented from being able to stream. If we could stream all our shows, we would. 